The Lord said there's someone here. He said, a, a bad news has actually been targeted against you from afar. But I stand by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Mahatia Behatia Ka. A croco be Mosanta. A Gracosi Getia Makuriate. Fakula. Keliko Sukepika. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. I see this bad news from afar. And I hear in the realm of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, that bad news shall not come. Koborika. A Kakusu Kepa. Now listen to me. And believe what I tell you. I tell you the truth in Christ Jesus. And I learn that there is someone here. There is someone here. I see a gang up of the enemy. You have bought a testimony from afar. And this news will be sent from afar. But I stand by the anointing of the spirit of God. The Bible said when the enemy shall come against you like a flood. He said the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against them. Hear me. In the name of Jesus the resurrected Lord. We forbid all forms of bad news against you. Against your family. Against your job against your business this bad news shall not come in the name of Jesus the sickness that will place upon one and that will scatter the entire family the sickness that will be placed upon one and will cause the family to be in disarray I stand by the anointing of the spirit of God he said for this purpose what the son of God may manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil in the name of Jesus the resurrected Lord I decree and declare the agenda of darkness shall not prosper all over you shall not prosper all over your health shall not prosper all over your children your testimony shall not be aborted you can say amen let your amen be loud and clear and this is why you should not play with your phone it's an insult on God the presence of God is a place of change the altar it's a place of exchange. This is where God meets with his people. He appointed the place to meet with his people. In the appointed place of meeting with his people, we should never get familiar. Glory to God. Many of us have good businesses. But I have some, I have some little, I'm not a businessman, but I have some vital contact that I must not miss their call. But I will never bring my phone to church. Never. Why? So that there won't be contention of attention. Can I say amen? That's not my business. When I studied this scripture, I stopped every other thing, my study for that day. And since that time, I have not recovered. Even this morning, God still spoke to me about it. What scripture can turn your life around and will bring you into the reality of what God is saying concerning your life? And this is why you should never play with the word of God. Let me share this scripture with you. Proverbs 12 and verse 8, before we go into our business of today. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 8. Please, let's, we need, if you are writing, you need to write very fast because... We are going to do a lot of this study today. Ahmala Mahata. Ehu haya bahata. Shumoli hande kozu zita na hadi. Proverb chapter 8. Sorry, Proverb chapter 12 and verse number 8. He said, The man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. That scripture is loaded. A man shall be rewarded. A man shall be placed and be valued. A man who operates at high frequency of life and people will call him honor and valued. Why? Because of his wisdom. Our beauty can make a room for us. But our wisdom will bring the commendation we need to rise. Our skills can make room, our gifts can make room, but the commendation and reward that must necessarily come to us is equally proportional to the level of wisdom that is at work in us. We can get a good job, but we might not be able to have 
enough wisdom to sustain. I've seen many people, I've seen servants ride on horses, the Bible says. I've seen people look as if they are nothing, but they rise and climb to a high mountain. What actually promoted them? Yes, I'm not taking away the place of favor. But can I tell you this? Favor can promote you. It's wisdom that sustains. A man will be commended. A man will be recognized. Look at this. For some of us who are, many, all of us, all of us have fathers and mothers, even if some of, even one or two are dead. But we see as somebody who bear rule over us. Many of us respect our parents. Not because they have money. But you can't take away the level of their wisdom to solve problems. When you hear them advise you, you know that's the end. A man is commended according to the level of wisdom operating in that man. No one will rise ordinarily. The commendation, the reward you are looking for, the height you are seeking, you will actually be rewarded in that level. Why? Because of the level of wisdom operating in you. And that is why this month should not end the same way. Yeah, this month should not. If you have not prayed well, that the spirit of wisdom will rest upon you afresh. This is a service you should not play with. This is a service you should yearn. Oh God, if there is any level in you that wisdom will rest upon me, I tap into this access today and I receive the spirit of wisdom. Let me tell you what God told me this morning. He said, for the wisdom, for the sake of the wisdom of one person, a whole family can be delivered. You don't believe it. For the sake of the wisdom that was actually at work in the life of Joseph, he preserved the whole nation of Egypt. When you see any nation doing well, it is wisdom at work. And when you see other nations dragging, it is lack of wisdom. Necessarily the problem we have in Africa is lack of wisdom. Necessarily the problem we have in Nigeria is lack of wisdom. To bank mama, when there are issues to actually attend to, people are dying. There's no discussion about that. A lot of persons are repenting, saying they have actually done all the manner before, and yet they are forgiven and inculcated back. It's lack of wisdom, sir. It's grinding the nation into terrorism. For the sake of the wisdom. Of Joseph, the nation of Egypt was preserved. Even his family coming into glory. You know, he was the one actually passing food through his brothers to Jacob so that Jacob would not go hungry. You remember? That wisdom even preserved his own family. That wisdom preserved the nation of Egypt. That wisdom preserved food to the point that it was enough for all the nations of the world when there was famine in the land. Egypt would have suffered the same thing. If there was not a man who lack, who has the wisdom of God. And I love the recommendation of uh, Pharaoh towards Joseph. He said, can you find a man in whom the spirit of the Holy God is? Who is discreet and wise? Genesis chapter 41 from verse 38 down the line. Who is discreet and what? And wise. He commended that this man is a man who actually enjoy the spirit of the holy God. He didn't call it the spirit of his own gods because Pharaoh was more or less like a traditionalist. He didn't actually narrow that to the gods. He said no, in this man is the spirit of the holy gods and he is discreet and wise. Joseph did not become prime minister by accident. Let's stop praying useless prayer. There are some prayers we pray that will not take us anywhere. Oh God! Oh God, make me the head and not the tail. No, the Bible already said you are the head and not the tail. But one thing will guarantee that you are the head. You see, many husbands are not doing well. You know why? They are... Can I be honest with you? I've seen children that when you roll around and you will see the deficiency of wisdom of their parents. And this is what is affecting our society today. A man will be commended according to his wisdom. When God properly bless you with wisdom, it will not only be beneficial to you, it will be showing in the life, the help is much, it will be showing in the life of your family, even your nation will feel it.
one man or one woman properly endowed with the spirit of wisdom become joy to the family become joy not to the nation become joy to the community Joseph is a key example can I pray for you that in the name, reach up your right hand, that in the name of Jesus, may the spirit of wisdom rest upon you today. Yeah. Oh, your amen is not sounding like you receive it. Yeah. May the spirit of wisdom rest upon you today. Yeah. If you are saying amen, let your amen be loud and clear. Yeah. There are five keys to walking in divine wisdom. Which is what I'm going to share today. There are five keys to walking in what? Number one is the fear of God. No one can operate in divine wisdom except you genuinely fear God. Remember that there is a wisdom that comes from above which is the wisdom from God and this which is, which is what we call divine wisdom. This order of wisdom is from God but there is a commandment from God that says be ye holy as I am holy. If our God is holy, we must, we must reflect the nature to which God carries. That one of the nature that God carries is actually holiness, which we can call the fear of God. The fear of God in this context does not mean to be afraid. The fear of God simply means reference for God. How am I dressed? Is it referencing God? This is the fear of God. How am I eating? Is it referencing God? This is the fear of God. How am I how am I dealing with my finances? Is it is does it reference God? This is the fear of God. How am I managing people? Does it am I taking advantage and taking opportunities? Taking just just extorting people and doing the things I'm not supposed to do in the name that I occupy an office? No, sir. Anyone that must operate in the bank wisdom must be necessarily carry a nature of holiness, and then the fear of God must be feasible in the life of such a person. Let me say this. The Bible did not say we should base our faith, our, be our belief system on the nature of the flesh. Rather, it should be built on God. But, the fear of God is key. Does my dressing reflect that I fear God? Does my, does my manner of approach reflect that I fear God? I want to write an exam. Does it reflect that I fear God? They put me in an office. They said, just put one zero so that we'll share. He said, no, it's just to help ourselves. He said, I'm a deacon in my church. They say, all of us are Christian too. Does it reflect that we fear God? Just put one zero. Divine wisdom, the people that we walk in divine wisdom and will sustain it are people genuinely who fear God. Who fear God. Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, I'll read verse 7 to 10. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs chapter 2. Is somebody getting blessed this morning? I'll read from verse 7 to 10. The Bible recorded, it says, He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a sheet to those who walk upright. Now, note something here. God has a reservoir. Like a tank. And he's storing up divine wisdom only for those that are upright. Look at this. My name is David. And I qualify for the divine wisdom of God if I walk in the fear of God. The wisdom is already there. God already stored it up in a place. But God is looking for those who will be qualified to come and take it. That's why the Bible recorded there. He stored up. Now look at this. That something is not working in your life. That something is not available in God. It might be that you have not paid enough price to see it. One of the price to pay to work in the wisdom and to sustain it is the fear of God. You can't compromise this. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning. Is the foundation. Is the genesis. Of wisdom. The premier of wisdom is the fear of God. He is the first 
you must have. The fear of God must be visible in your life because the Bible recorded it said there is a reservoir in heaven. In the spirit realm, there are reservoirs that God already stored up sound wisdom for those who fear him. The moment you fear him, God take from the reservoir and pour it on you. Look at this. God is not a partial God. People who will not fear God will not operate in divine wisdom. He might not look, you see, he might look like the photocopy. The devil might give you something like cunningness and craftiness. And you might be having your way look as if you are smart. No, that's not divine wisdom. At the end of it, it will still become vanity. Having a second wife now is not divine wisdom. But having enough money, the world will tell you to, the world might tell you you need to relax. A side chick. But that's not divine wisdom. He looks smart not to pay tight. But in the realm of the spirit, it is foolishness. He looks smart not to do devotion. You are rushing out because of work. Beloved, if God is not taking the priority of your life, the devil helping you to take that priority will mock you later. The fear of the Lord is stored of sound wisdom. Somebody say, is stored of sound wisdom. For me, he stored up sound wisdom. For me, as I fear him. Anyone who genuinely fear God enjoy the flow, the sustainability of divine wisdom. You are receiving that wisdom today. Amen. You are not saying amen. amen. You are receiving divine wisdom today. Amen. He stored up sound wisdom. For those who fear him. That's the, that's the beginning. Number two. I told you five keys. I will need to rush them because of time. Number two is meekness. Number two is what? He stored up sound wisdom for the just. But those who will operate and sustain divine wisdom. A quality must be found in them called meekness. Now the question is what is meekness? Meekness means to be humble. Meekness means to be teachable. When people are difficult to be taught, they are not humble. And they are not meek. Don't wear this shoe, this black shoe. They say, no. No. That's who I am. That's my village. You know, sir. When the instruction of scriptures does not override your village mentality, you have not fully obeyed God. All of us can be tired once in a while. Like this morning, the best thing I should be doing is to be sleeping by now. I'm honestly tired. But I fear God. Number two, the instruction of God must be obeyed. I find myself here. Sometimes it comes like that that the, that the nature will knock allow us keep pushing now God understand that but the grace is available but anyone that will operate in divine wisdom and will sustain it one thing is key you must be meek if you genuinely fear God it will bring upon you a reality and this reality is called meekness there are three definitions there are three meanings to sorry there are three meanings to meekness number one is what to be humble number two is what to be teachable. Number three is to be loyal. To be what? People that are not loyal to authority are not meek. You are married, you are not loyal to your husband. You are not loyal to your wife. You are working somewhere, you are not loyal to your boss. You are not meek. And that's not divine wisdom. This is what the Bible is saying. I try to seek a definition from contemporaries. And let me tell you the definition I found. He said, it is an attitude or quality of heart whereby a person is willing to accept and submit without resistance to the will and the desire of someone else. The someone else here is God. An attitude or quality of heart whereby a person is willing to accept and submit without resistance. This is meekness. This is loyalty. This is humbleness. This is being teachable. He said, an attitude and a quality of why, why, by a, why a person is willing to accept or submit without resistance to the will and the desire of another or someone else, which is God. 
This is the kind of attitude that makes cause to flow and sustain divine wisdom. Nobody will ever flow in divine wisdom if you are not genuinely teachable, you are not genuinely humble, you are not genuinely loyal. Nobody. I've seen the reason why many marriages don't last. This quality is always off. Meekness is key. Stay humble. As a husband, stay humble. Learn to say sorry when you need to. It is pride to, for a man to say, I can't say sorry to my spouse. The Bible did not say he's a slave. The Bible said you are co a of the grace of God. Meaning, as God redeem you, so God redeem the lady. It, now, it's your master. Because God will always respect hierarchy. But nevertheless, we are co a of the grace of God. That's why you should be able to say sorry when you are wrong. That's why you should be able to say sorry so that the relationship keep going. When the nature of being humble, the nature of being loyal, the nature of being teachable is off in any relationship, in any organization, believe me, divine wisdom is out of it. To be humble, to be teachable, to be loyal is an attitude and quality of heart. Whereby the person is willing to accept and submit without resistance to the will and the desire of someone else. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Matthew 5 and verse 5. The Bible recorded, it said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the heart. Think about it. Anyone that is teachable, humble, and loyal has the potential and possibility to inherit everything that the person you are loyal to has. The reason why the Bible says you shall inherit the heart here simply means the heart is the Lord. Psalm 24 and verse 1. The heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God owns the whole heart. Now, one day the Lord spoke to me when we were in this church. I was reading. And the Lord told me and he said, I'm in control but you are in charge. I control all things but I charge you the responsibility of this. Think about this. God is in control of this church. How many of you agree with me? But I'm in charge. When God is looking for who to blame for anything that is not working yet, who will God call? When things are working and God wants to say, well done for leading my people right, who will God first speak to? In our life, God is in control, but you are in charge. That's why you decide to wear the clothes you wore today. So the church to which God commit to us, if we submit to be humble, to be loyal, and to be teachable, God said, all that I have, you will inherit. Bless and they make, for they shall inherit what? You cannot walk into your inheritance, even divine wisdom, until you are making. Teachable, humble, loyal, be loyal to relationships. Be loyal anywhere you are found. Loyalty proves Loyalty does not prove the person you are the, Now, a lot of persons are not loyal to God Does not reduce God, is that so? Anywhere you find yourself and you are not loyal to that kind of a system Will not reduce the system Will rather reduce you, can I just say amen? Blessed are the meek For they shall inherit And if they will inherit They, inherit, they need wisdom to inherit Is that so? Nobody inherits any good things without good wisdom to sustain it when God can find meekness in you, God will place upon you a dimension of wisdom that will make you inherit the earth. The man Moses was a man who was meek. In, in Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3, the Bible said, Moses was a man that was actually meek among them all. There has not found such a man that has meek as Moses. Don't let me go there so that we can have, we can move further. Number three. Number three. Number one is the fear of God. Number two is what? Number three is effective prayer altar. I put it as what? I didn't say prayer altar. I didn't say prayers. I purposely put it this way. Effective prayer what? Any oh kabaruski abata. Effective prayer altar. Let's read scriptures before I explain. Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. Let's read from verse 1 to 6. My son, if you are a female, then you can put my daughter. 
it is God that is speaking to us. My son, if you receive my word and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to what? To wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek, are you seeing prayer here? Eh? Are you seeing prayer here? Eh? Is somebody following? Pay attention again. Let's start again. Pay attention very well and follow the word. Your life is about to change. Are you seeing prayer here? Eh? God is giving commandment and is giving you a prayer point. <laughs> are you seeing this? God is giving commandment and is giving each and every one of us a prayer point. He said, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my command within you so that you incline your ears to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Look at verse 3. He said, yes, if you cry out, that is if you pray, if you cry out for the sermon and lift up your voice for understanding. Is that not a prayer point? God is giving a great point here. Look at verse 4. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure, look at verse 5. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Look at verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. For the Lord gives, meaning the, the wisdom we are talking about is actually given from above. And we can cry and pray. You, there is no body who operates and walk in divine wisdom that does not maintain an effective prayer altar. Effective prayer altar that is alive, not dead once in a while. Not okay. I pray today, next week is when I pray. I pray today, next month is when I'm serious. I just do Sunday, Sunday medicine. No, an effective prayer altar. God is giving us commandment right here, and yet He was given, He was actually giving us a prayer point. If you look at verse 3, He said, Yes, if you cry for the sermon and lift up your voice of understanding, you will understand the fear of the Lord. And for He said, For the Lord gives wisdom, and out of His mouth comes understanding. You cannot operate in this level of wisdom until you maintain. And effective prayer, you know, you know, the challenge with many of us is because most often than not, when we are enjoying some things, we camp around it. Some of us have some good clothes right now. You are not thinking about how to buy clothes anymore. You never, you, you, you know, deep within you, that fashion upgrade every year. If the wisdom that brought that result, if you plateau around it, not learning new things and not being prayerful to move forward, the clothes you bought 10 years ago are not more fashionable. This year, I'm mean, not you agree with me. So, if your level of wisdom ten years ago is what you are still banking on, I'm wise now. At least I have first class. Your head go will continue to tell you that you are doing well, but in life there will be no good result to show. The challenge with many of us is that we plateau with whatever God is doing. Many of us has enjoyed a little bit of drop and the flow of divine wisdom at the point, but we plateau around it. I'm a promoted in my job. That thing that promotes me is still there. I enjoy grace. Yes, you are. But can I tell you this? Don't plateau around it. Keep your prayer life effective. Let your altar of the fear of God be entered. Let your altar of meekness be entered, but do not be quiet. Karakus yata, if you cry. The Bible, that's what the Bible says. It says if you cry for the sermon and lift up your voice of understanding. Verse 6 said, He said, For the Lord gives wisdom, for out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. It's only from the mouth of God that comes understanding. How many of us understand all things? It's only God that understands all things. And from his mouth is what will come. And the gateway to his mouth is the 30 prayer altar. Pray. Pray. Kalo sabahata. Enrico sabahati ade. Pray. Somebody talk about right and just pray in the Holy Ghost if you can. E modi ante kori brande la haziza. E kori ante koli pa akula suzita. Lift up your right hand, blast in the Holy Ghost. E ruka subeli ka hande le kosiwa. La kosi bohonta ya hadi akosizi. May your prayer life receive fire this morning. We cast out the spirit of lukewarmness. Receive effective prayer altar that is always on fire for the Lord. E rakosu bahante kula hadi. Glory, glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Number four. I'm rushing. I'm not giving a lot of examples, but I'm rushing. Number four is meditation. Number four is what? Proverbs chapter 18. When you pray, don't forget to meditate. Don't forget to what? 
I'm going to tell you the meaning of meditation. Med meditation simply means to ponder on, to reflect upon. Like I've been meditating on that scripture, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 8 since Wednesday. I tried to read, it wasn't going, so I go back to it. And God began to speak to me. In, oh, Lord, God wants me to tell you something. On Wednesday, before I come to preach, I was praying. And I came out here and we began to pray. And a few numbers of people joined me and we were praying. We prayed about 30 minutes before service. While we were praying, the Lord spoke to me. He said, do you know that punishment in this kingdom is not evil? I wrote it down. That punishing people is actually to find their level of loyalty. And he gave me an example. I'm privileged to have biological children. If I carry one of them now and I slap, ah, and I used to, once in a while. And after I do, I'll be the one to beg. I always be the one to beg. That's what I do. When I punish someone, I always be the one, most times, to beg. Don't take, don't, don't lean on that one. It's just a wisdom I derive from God. And after, I will call the young, I will tell, maybe, okay, maybe praise, for instance, praise and enjoy a little bit of that anyway. You know? So I'll call and I'll hug and I'll say, you see, that did not really want to beat you. Now the truth is this, what he did was wrong. And he, and he will say, sorry, and he will tell me, sorry, daddy, and we'll end it there. But the moment that, the moment that little baby says, sorry, daddy, my heart is melted. Sometimes tears drop out of my eyes. So I don't like even beating. But I just have to. The Lord told me, he said, this person offended you. This person offended you. He said, punish them. He said, because if you didn't punish them, you will not check their level of loyalty. If your baby will not come back, despite the fact that you beat, and then still abide with you, it's not loyal in the first place. The Lord told me, I, he said, I correct, I chastise those whom I love. And when God do that, is actually to take their level of loyalty. God told me. So when people misbehave around you, you decide to overlook sometimes, it's good. But most often than not, when you actually a superior, learn to punish. Because, now look at this. This man offended me and said, get out from here, I'm going to start the back. He said, me? As fat as I am. They don't know I'm a big man in this church. He said, I should be sitting at the back. What's wrong with pastor? If he changes his face and do not do that, it means he's not lawyer in the first place. He's only occupying position. He's fake. How many of you agree with what I'm saying? When you occupy a position before, you misbehave in that position and you are being punished because you misbehave. And you take out that the yastic to misbehave in the first place. You are not lawyer. The Lord spoke to me. He said, punishment is actually to check the loyalty of people. That when he punishes people, he's checking. If they have not gone to the devil, if their heart is still in him. How many of us will our parents punish us? I will not say that the yastic to disrespect them. That despite the fact that they do not do that which is right, we still abide. I remain loyal. That's my meditation, really. And I was praying when the Lord spoke this to me. I was writing immediately. And he told me, he said, I chastise those I love. Is whom God loves, God will check. Is your heart still with me? I don't know who I was sharing with some days ago. Maybe yesterday, the person did one thing and said, punish the person. And wait for the reaction of the person. If I spunk praise, and I did my hand like this, she did not come to hug. I already know. There are two buses in this house. Is that I shut down school fees? Or she need to, how could body some her time? Or she need to learn how to pray and fast for God to come from heaven and send money. So that the biscuit and the happy hour can continue. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A child will punish and then becomes a rebellion. Ah, you need to pay keen attention. Can I just say amen? So, most often than none, punishment is not to met out evil. Which many people do so. Punishment is not necessary to met out evil. No. Punishment is actually met out to change the loyalty. And the other person. He said, you misbehave. Barrister, you are not sitting in front again. Again, you sit at the back for the next two weeks. He said, me? I'm a barrister of the law. I'm too. You are not lawyer in the first place. Can I say, man? I just keep that one here. Now, this is what meditation will bring. 
Are we learning something here? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Meditation number 4. A man who isolates himself, seek his own desire, is ranged against all wise judgment. I want King James. Who has King James? This is New King James. He said, A man having desire, separate himself, intermediate with all wisdom. Is that what is written there? Who has King James? Proverbs 18 and verse 1. Proverbs 18 verse 1. King James. Have been separated. Seek it and intermediate with all wisdom. He said, A man having a desire, separate himself. What is he separating from? From the, from the noise. Just to be connected. Meditation is to ponder. Meditation is to reflect. Like the word of God that I just share with you right now. I sit to reflect. What are you saying, Lord? Abraham told Zuzu. And most times I just, sometimes I just trip off and just see it and then think over the scripture again and again. And the Lord began to interpret the scripture to me again and again. Let me say this. Divine wisdom flows much in meditation. You fear God. You are humble. You are prayerful. You meditate on the word. There is always a flow that comes from time. Many people call this inspiration. But let me say this. Without inspiration, you will never go far in life. Because you will not be able to give back to new, new things by time. Can I say amen to that? So you want to operate in divine wisdom? Meditate. Alright. Number five, I'm rushing. Number five is kingdom service. Number five is what? Nothing corrupts our wisdom like not being useful to God. If you have the fear of God, you are meek, you are prayerful, you meditate, and that which you derive from God is not useful to God. It will be corrupted. Solomon started in this manner. Solomon has a fear of the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon enjoyed the flow of divine wisdom. But the moment the wisdom came, he, he became prosperous. Kings began to seek his knowledge. A king traveled from afar to come and seek his wisdom. But at the point, Solomon became a man not being useful to God anymore. And that made his wisdom to be corrupted. He grew to having 700 wives and 300 concubines. A man that operates the wisdom of God that's supposed to be useful. And when he died, he said, vanity upon vanity. God did not, God, you see, his wisdom is supposed to translate to eternity. Because the wisdom of David that was transferred to him was useful because that wisdom was useful for the kingdom of God. Any wisdom that we have, whatever it is that is a deposit of God in our life, and it's not laid down at the altar, it will be corrupted. This is a challenge with a lot of people who are miracle seekers. Who goes about, okay, I receive miracle here, I receive miracle here. It will not even benefit you at the long run. Receiving from every quarter looks sweet. And I'm speaking to you as a pastor. I've met some people in my life, in my little life. Who told me one time and said, Pastor, I want my husband dead. That's the prayer I should pray. I, I was speaking with Sister Faith yesterday. I said, he said, I'm seeing a lot. I said, you are not seeing anything. Any job you find yourself, you must see. If I tell you my experience as a pastor, if I find my way to resign, if God will allow me, I will. I'm saying it on live camera. Maybe something that will be a little bit more relaxing, that there will be no plenty headache. Number one, I don't like seeing plenty of people. It was later I gained the confidence of speaking like this. I used to be a very reserved person. I read too much. And I pray, I fast six, seven months. That's the kind of life I live. I just enjoy simple life. But before you know, this one will say something, you think about it, you say, okay, let me break the fast so that I can concentrate and face of it. And all of that and all of that. There is no job where you find yourself that you won't find issues. There will always be challenges to manage. I might say something here. But what is keeping me going is that I lay down my life at the altar. That no matter what happens, 
Since God has said so, I just go so. If we look at it, it's not sweet. Are we together? I've seen people who go from pillar to post not actually laying things at the altar. What they think is the benefit and the, and the treasure of God through them. Many of them became herbalists. Some of them became witches. Because their desire and hunger that is not guided by scriptures will push them to the wrong move. Believe what I'm saying. Any desire and hunger that is not guided by scriptures will push you to a wrong altar. I'm trying to remember a story. I, I was actually telling these people, I said, these people who operate like this, who operate like this. I've seen people before who will call me and tell me, Pastor, what do you say to my wife? It's God. One woman coming from UK, sometimes the woman is dead now. Called me and he said, Pastor, do you mean God is not saying anything about me to you? I said, no, God didn't say anything. And this woman would tell me, say, I know one pastor now. That anytime I call, you always have word for me that God said, God said, God said, no, you used to hand the money. I said, that's why I'm different. I will not tell you when God is not saying. And people who operate in that atmosphere, looking for what God is saying at all times. The one God has told you, what, what have you done with it? If the treasure and the wisdom to which you have received is actually useful in service, you'll be looking for what next God is saying. Because God will continually say, can I just say amen to that? The little I have received from God, I'm putting it right on the altar. I, that's what I do. I use it to serve all the time. And that's why I'm not hungry for what God will say. God speaks to me without me asking. Man, God has spoken to me this morning. When I was baffling, God spoke to me expressly. He said a man will be commended according to his level of wisdom. He said the wisdom is talking about right here. It's not actually limited to an individual. When God play, when I place wisdom upon a particular nation, they will exile. He, God began to speak to me expressly. That even till now, I don't have time to sit down to write it. Because I was so rushing to prepare for service. I didn't ask him, he told me. My wife was not supposed to resume her job, if she would permit me to say this. She was not supposed to resume her job this time. We already make it to our mind and say, you are no more working. Because I need you to do some fittings for me. There are a lot of things around me, that there are a lot of treasures around me that are not explored. And, they, and you have learned and you have grown to this level. You sit down and do this. Whatever money they pay you, they will pay you. Not even from church account, I will pay. Only for me to go to the toilet. I, I, I wanted to shower. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, no. She's not designing now. Allah had to be. And I came back and said, the Lord said, you are not designing. Continue the job. I wasn't looking for the voice of God. I already made up my mind. But the Lord, when the Lord blessed us with this guy, I wanted to say, I said, how will I maintain it? Where will I get money? Only for me to go and bath. He said, if I give you something, I can maintain it. I wanted to hold all those banker Corolla. Uh -huh. You know it. <laughs> Glory to God. So I wanted something where they remove the spare part, 10,000, you have fixed it. Not that you look for one spare part, they'll say it's 80,000. No. I wanted something simple. So that I will not need, I hate begging. So that I won't be begging anybody to do anything. But he said, no, if I give you something, I can maintain it. And that set you seat. That handed it. Let me say this. Whatever treasure you receive in God, and it's not laid down at the altar to serve, it will be corrupted. To flow in divine wisdom. Thank God for the fear of God. Thank God for meekness. Thank God for effective prayer altar. Many people, when they get to the stage three, they become arrogant. They have the, they have the fear of God. Number two, they have the meekness. Number three, they have the prayer altar, when they get to that level, they become arrogant. Many people, I've seen many people in my little life that when they, when they tend to fear God, they don't fornicate, they don't drink beer, they don't do all of that. There's a way they do like this. God has not even flashed them, not to even to, to call. They're already calling themselves a name. I'm honest here. Yeah. They didn't see any flash from God. They already said they have called. Why? Because they don't drink and they don't sleep around. And they move from the level of their, their meek. In that meekness, they begin to use a few treasures from God. Not even full inheritance. They go and buy one suit. Start saying, bless you to everybody in the community. Then when they now grow to the level where 
They now begin to pray. Like four hours, six hours. They come and come and bamboo you. I prayed nine hours yesterday. What does it translate to? It goes to the level to which you meditate. There are people who are prayer warriors and their life failures. They pray longer, nothing to show. Let me say this. And I'm saying this in all honesty and sincerity and in truth. My wife is here. I don't pray long over any matter. It's just that the demand that God tells me sometimes might be heavy to do. God has helped me to conquer money. God will not tell me to empty my account and I'll think about it twice. I won't. God has helped me to conquer money. But believe what I'm saying. There are things that God will tell me to do. What can be telling you to waking up one a.m. every day and then don't sleep on the five? I fed that one plenty. Because uh, yesterday we went to one of our pastor friends bought the land. We went to go and uh, this young man, they followed me. They want to go and set and the rest of that. Dr. Paul was supposed to come, so they needed some pastors to come out. So I was there too. When I came back from that distance, I met some guys that I've seen long ago who used to work for me before. I'd stop by to greet them and talk and a little while. Before I left, one thing issue, one to one issue, one thing left to one thing left to one thing. I, I was very tired. When I slept, I slept like a balloon. If, uh, well, of course, you are, you are fired. Uh, there are systems like that that sometimes you get tired. And God already told you, be praying three to five. And you have gone around. And the thing you have gone around for is even the work of God. Uh, there were times that we are carrying block here. I will carry block sometimes. I will get to around the level. And I have not eaten. For the first time, I will eat is around the level. When you sleep at that time, it's six o'clock, you wake up. When you wake up, you will not be beating yourself. Oh God, I did not pray this night. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How many of you have happened to like that before? Now, the sacrifices that God will place on you sometimes... I'll, don't let me go into that. There are deals that God will deal with you in that. But anything you get, let me say this way: anything you get, the treasure you get in God that is not laid at the altar of service to God, will be corrupted. That was what corrupted the wisdom of Solomon. Let me give you three examples. I wrote them down. Number one is Daniel. Daniel was a wise servant. He sat four kings. Go and study the book of Daniel. That man served four kings. At a particular time if you study Daniel chapter 3, study Daniel chapter 6, they thrown him in that, they thrown him into the, in, into the den of lion. Why did they do that? Simply because they said nobody should pray in the kingdom. And Daniel prayed. At a particular time, they wanted to remove the, the king at the dream. And then he said they are looking for somebody to interpret the dream. The Bible recorded in Daniel chapter 3. 2 and verse 19, he said, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the ninth season. Daniel was a wise man who has access to the wisdom of God, but nevertheless Daniel was a servant. If your wisdom is not laid down at the altar to serve, I bet you it will be corrupted. Joseph was a servant. The wisdom of Joseph that could preserve food for seven years, could interpret the dream of Pharaoh, gave him a space and became the prime minister in a strange land. He was, he was not from Egypt. He was actually a Jew. How will a Jew become a prime minister in another man's country? Why? By wisdom. Never forget, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 8, 8 that says, a man will be commended, will be elevated, will be valued according to his wisdom. Because of the wisdom of Joseph, they forgot where Joseph came out from. They never say he's from Egypt, but they say, come, stand here. You become a prime minister in the stream. Why? There's a wisdom working in him. But that same Joseph was a servant. He could not sleep with his wife. He said, for I fear God. The wisdom that was operating in him, that wisdom was laid at the altar to serve. Let me say this. Anything that you have and you have received from God that cannot be laid down at the altar in genuine service will soon be corrupted. Believe me. Number one, Daniel. Number two, Joseph. Let me give you an example. Number three is Paul. Let's study Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. Sorry, Ephesians 3 and verse 1. Never forget that Paul is actually a wise apostle. He recorded that 
He recorded that. It was recorded that Paul the Apostle wrote the two thirds of the New Testament. Two thirds. That's how Yamakuli has it. For somebody to have access to God to write the two thirds of the New Testament, that man is wise. Peter commended the wisdom of Paul. He said, The mystery that has been shown unto our brother Paul. The apostles that were before him commended him because of his access and the depth of the revelation that Paul. You cannot preach the gospel without actually talking about Paul. That guy has access. Wisdom. But that, that wisdom was laid at the altar for service. Any wisdom that you receive or whatever treasure you receive from God that is not laid down at the altar to serve will be corrupted. Look at Paul. Ephesians chapter 3. Somebody's life is about to change here. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 1. He said, For this reason, hi, Paul, the prisoner of who? The prisoner of who? For you. Paul became a prisoner simply to take the gospel to the Gentiles. The Gentiles are actually preached to the Jews. Prisoner in the context simply means I'm a bond servant. A slave, in con a slave that is resisted by will. Every prisoner, the will is cut off. The freedom is cut off. Paul said, I laid down my life as a prisoner of Christ simply for the gospel to reach the Gentiles. I live my freedom. I forgot whatever the totality of the treasure that's working me. But just for one thing to be seen, I become a prisoner for the gospel to reach the Gentiles. I prayed the prayer many years back. I said, may the Lord send me to San Farah where they don't like to plant church. One of my friends is in the UK now, Charles. Charles told me, he said, you will die there. I said, it's better to die there than to be thinking of us. I consider my life not any important. I came into this city alone with a bag. You need to, I need to, there are some few stories that you guys need to hear. How I came in here. It wasn't rosy from the beginning. If some of you know me some five years back, you will know I'm far from what I'm doing now. It wasn't this convenient. There are alternatives for us to actually to redo what we are doing now. There are days you are not fasting, three days you will not eat. And we don't want to beg anyone. Become a prisoner just for the service of God to be saved. Is this how to pay salary now? To few persons God helps us to pay. But I tell you something, it was not like that before. I've never even, all the money together was not even enough to actually give me a salary. It's not today. We became a prisoner and a bond servant just to see the gospel preach. There are few stories many of you don't know that I slept outside on the road before without having a hope of where the next meal will come from. If, you, if whatever treasure you receive from God cannot be laid down at the altar to serve, it will be corrupted. Watch many of us who are doing well at the particular time. And at the time where we are doing well, something happened. We choose to deviate from God. I had this experience too. I was a follower, and I didn't follow of the father that God placed ahead of me. But many people came to talk me out of it, and they said, this man is too hard for you. And I said, truly, it's hard. Truly. I said, let me redefine. The moment I redefine was the moment of my trouble. I didn't speak against. I was just trying to use common sense. Common sense will not go far with God. Whatever treasure you have, the wisdom that you have received from God, if it is not used to serve him, it will be corrupted. Let's look at Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. But I want the amplified version. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I think, yes, I think I have amplified here. If you have amplified version of the Bible, let's read Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. Look at the introduction of Paul. He said, from Paul, a born servant of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, called to be an apostle, a special messenger, set to preach the gospel, good news, of and from God. I use the introduction of somebody here. He said, from Paul, a born servant of Christ. A born servant simply means a servant that is composed to serve. A slave. 
That's what under translation says. If you read under translation, under translation says, a slave of Christ. Who has the good news? The good news, Bible. Who has under translation, NLT? NLT. This translation will, will give us an idea. Romans chapter 1 verse 1. He said, a born servant connotes that a slave that, that has no, no option of Christ. How many of us can the Bible write of us that despite the fact that we are wise, despite the fact that we have money, despite that the fact that we had, we had everything, and this is the problem with the church. You bought a car, good testimony. You have a house, good testimony. You have a wife, good children, good testimony. You have all of that and all of this treasure, good testimony. But can I tell you this? How many of us can empty ourselves of, of all the things that we have, and yet we are still a born servant? How many people can be commissioner or president of the country and still be a janitor in church and usher to usher people? How many? How many people will still be committed in church if they are not given a special seat? How many? How many people will still be committed in service to God? Never to come late in the interest of God. Not to please a man. In the interest that I am a servant and I am a born servant of Christ. And I will exhibit my duty without supervision. This is what we are. This is who we are. And that's why, at my, that's why I don't have a girlfriend eating somewhere. That's why I'm not drinking for nobody to come and preach to me. No. That's why I will not steal church money. Because if I steal, you will not even know. Before you know, it will take time. And if I shout on you that God will kill you tomorrow, won't you be afraid? You will leave. Am I sensible? But I won't do that. Why? I'm a born servant of Christ. I will not want you to catch me in the place that will actually demean your faith. I'm too conscious that whatever treasure I've received in God, many of you will expect me because of the anointing. You honor God through me because when I say a thing, it comes to pass and all of that. Glory to God for all of that. Whatever gift or treasure I've received from God, if it's not laid down at the altar to serve, it will be corrupted. Walking in divine wisdom, number one, the fear of God. Number two. Number two is what? Number three. Effective prayer. Number four. Meditation. Number five. Kingdom service. I want us to pray. I'm looking for the prayer I wrote. I want us to pray. How many of you would like to pray? Glory to God. That the Lord will release grace on you. To walk in wisdom. That the grace to fear God, the grace of meekness, we are going to rise to pray. We are going to rise to pray. Can I have someone on the keyboard? We are going to rise to pray. That the Lord will release upon us the grace of the fear of God. Meekness, the grace of effective prayer altar, the grace of meditation, and the grace to serve. To serve. So that all that we have will not be corrupted. I don't want any of my... Any, I don't want any good thing. God, I'm looking for more. Bring it down a little. I'm looking for more. Not for those ones to be corrupted. I'm already married. I don't want the marriage to be corrupted. I do that in honor. My wife must serve God. Ask her. We don't negotiate it. I'm not saying this on the altar to impress you. I'm on the altar of the Most High God. If the interest of God does not supersede that marriage, I know we will soon break. I used to tell her. I said, pray. Oh. Don't let me tell you the rest of that one. One day we went to go and use our car to carry wood for church. This young man followed me. One woman shouted. He said, see Jeep. Jeep suffer. He said, you want to kill this car? I said, see your car? God gave it to us Moses for the house of God. If there's anything God has ever given me material that cannot be laid down on the altar, let God take it for me. No. no. It becomes an entrance and an idol that will be worshipping. No, sir. No. no. That, that's no more wisdom. If God gives me a voice and God is struggling, 
for me to use it, the voice he gave me for him. Let God come and take the voice. Of what use it is? Of what use? Of what use? There's no money God give me that I cannot lay down at the altar. Ask my wife. May God open your eyes to see the kind of seed we sow. The kind. The kind. The kind. The kind. Whatever God will give me that cannot be laid down at the altar will not represent divine wisdom. Believe what I'm saying. And it is, it is not serving with it. If God gives you health and you are not using it to serve God, in the day of sickness, who will deliver you? I told God one day, I said, thank you that I'm not sick. He said, if you are sick, you will do what you are doing for me. Meaning God is the one keeping me. What I entered our house last Thursday, so terrible to the point that I drank sand. For my life today. I've not gone to any hospital. I literally drank sand. I'm stronger than someone. Believe me, these things are real. The grace for the fear of God, the grace for meekness, the grace for effective prayer halter, the grace for meditation, the grace for kingdom service. Lift your two hands and ask God. Lift your two hands and ask God. The grace. For the fear of God. The grace for meekness. The grace for effective prayer altar. The grace for meditation. The grace for kingdom service. Everything laid down at the altar. I'm an usher, I do it well. With the consciousness of heaven that he has given me this treasure. I'm a choir, I do it well. I lay it at the altar of Christ. The grace for the fear of God has the Lord this morning. The grace for meekness, the grace for effective prayer altar, the grace for meditation, the grace for kingdom service, effective kingdom service. Karabo Simahandanaba. And I stand as the Lord of you, Holy God, to our praise is you. Please pray. You have 30 seconds to go. Please pray. 30 more seconds. The grace for the fear of God. The grace of meekness. The grace of effective prayer altar. The grace for medica meditation. The grace. The grace. The grace for kingdom service. I laid down my life my time, my resources, my skill at the altar. I lay down my wisdom at the altar. Holy God to whom our praise is the Esther of you. Say forever you will be the land upon the throne I gladly bow my name to worship you say forever you will be the land upon the throne I gladly bow to worship you, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. I present my life. To you, Lord, let your will be done. Put your two hands up. 
Say let your will be done Let your will be done I present my life to you Let your will be done in my life. Lift your hands high. I decree that the spirit of wisdom rests upon everyone here this morning. The Bible says it's tall sound wisdom for the just. We ask to deal upon every one of us in this assembly this morning. Let wisdom the divine wisdom rest upon every one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take away the spirit of foolishness and struggling in our lives in the name of Jesus. Take away every form of struggle and foolishness in all departments of our life in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. You are blessed coming to service this morning. Say amen. amen. Put your hands together for the Almighty and please have your seat. I present my life. We we'll package our Thanksgiving offering and then we'll sing as we go. To you, O oh Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. I present my life to you, oh Lord. Let your will be done. Say so you are the lifter of my head. From you the fountains flow Say you are the lifter of my head I lead to worship you For you are God oh, oh, oh. For you are God Oh Lord, you are the God, the Awesome, you are God, the healing God. service this morning, you are not genuinely born again, or you one time born again, you bastarded, may I request you raise up your right hand where you are, I'm going to be praying with you, give your life to Christ this morning, don't assume, you know you are not born again, or you one time born again, you bastarded, come to Jesus today, may I request you raise up your right hand, you say, pastor pray for me, I want to make my way back to Christ, I've been wandering away from him, say, pastor pray for me for mercy, who is that person this morning? Just raise up your right hand where you are and I'll pray with you. The Lord told me to make an altar call. If you are doing that, giving your life to Christ, or you're dedicating your life to Christ this morning, my request you raise up your right hand and I'll be praying with you. Glory to God. 
All right, put that right hand on your chest. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I know I am a sinner. Forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I accept you, my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Remove my name from the book of death. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. May that brother, please, you may see me after service. God bless you in Jesus' name. All right, you give your tithe to the church account at the cost of the week. And we're giving your tithe this morning. My request is step forward so that we'll pray with you. You give your tithe to the church at the, at the cost of the week. You send your tithe to the, to the church account at the cost of the week. My request is step forward and then I will pray with you. We'll pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless every title in the house. We rebook the devourer for your sake. You will never hunger. Neither would you test. You will not lack any good.